Today we're going to look at part two of our original video of facts you may not know about Sunderland. So here are 10 more weird and wonderful facts about the city of Sunderland you might not know. Number 10, the light bulb. Joseph Wilson Swan was born in Sunderland on October the 31st, 1828, and began his career as an apprentice to a local chemist. Some of Swan's earliest developments were in the field of photography, where he perfected the carbon process of photographic printing and developed the rapid photographic plate. He also painted the first bromide paper in 1879, allowing photography to become a popular pastime. Swan is better known, however, for his development of the incandescent filament electric lamp, the first practical electric light bulb. Swan demonstrated this in Sunderland in Fawcett Street on January the 19th, 1879. Edison, who also claims to have invented the light bulb, didn't demonstrate his light bulb till December 1879, almost a year after Swan in Sunderland. Following the successful demonstration, he established at Benwell the world's first electric light bulb factory. Later, Swan went on to light up Mosley Street in Newcastle City Centre, the first street in the world to be lit by electric light. Number 9. City Status Sunderland was granted city status more recently than you may think. It wasn't until the 20th of May 1992 to celebrate the Queen's Ruby Jubilee that the town was given city status. Following on from this at the Queen's Golden Jubilee, the city petitioned to be allowed a Lord Mayor, but this was unsuccessful. Although the city does not have a cathedral, as it is located in the vicinity of Durham, it does have Sunderland Minister. Following on from Sunderland receiving city status, it has also been twinned with Essen in Germany and Saint-Nazaire in France, and it also has friendship agreements with Washington DC in the USA. Number 8. Weirmouth Colliery there can't be a person living in Sunderland who doesn't know about the city's mining history, but not everyone would know that the area was once home to the deepest mine in the whole world. When Weirmouth Colliery began producing coal in 1835, it was the deepest mine in the world at 481 metres, almost a third of a mile. Eventually there were three pits on the site, entitled A, B and C. In December 1993, Weirmouth became the last coal mine of the County Durham Coalfield to close. The Stadium of Light was built on the site next to the three shafts leading deep below the earth. Number 7. The Beatles Everyone knows that the Beatles played at the Empire at the height of Beatlemania in November 1963, and many people know the legend about the group sliding down the pole in the fire station next door to escape hysterical fans. But most people don't know that the biggest act in history of popular music gave three performances on Wearside. Firstly, as a bottom of the bill to Helen Shapiro on February the 9th, 1963 at the Empire Theatre, before they played the Rink Ballroom in Park Lynn three months later, just before the superstardom began. Number 6. The US Flag The Stars and Stripes could be said to be modelled from our own football team colours, though in reality it is said to have been inspired by the coat of arms of the first US President, George Washington, who hailed from Washington, UK. Washington Old Hall was the ancestral home of the family of George Washington and several generations have since lived at Washington Old Hall too. The Washington family crest featured red and white stripes and three red stars, therefore seen to have inspired the American flag. Number 5. The Hand Grenade The Mills bomb was invented by Sir William Mills, born in 1856 in Weir Street in Southwick, where the Times Inn pub stands which actually displays a blue heritage plaque today. There were hand grenades before Mills, but the most recognisable was his pineapple design, first used in 1915 at the height of World War I, in which changed trench warfare forever. It was safer than its predecessors, at least for the user, and around 75 million would be manufactured. Less controversially, Mills also painted aluminium golf clubs. He received a knighthood for his hand grenade design, and then later died in Somerset in 1932. Number 4. Harry Houdini Harry Houdini appeared and performed a show in Sunderland in the early 20th century. The Hungarian-American escape artist, magic man and stunt performer played Avenue Theatre between the 22nd to the 27th of May 1905. Avenue Theatre closed its doors in 1932 and was soon after demolished. 
It stood not far from where the Sunland Empire stands today. Number 3. Cholera The deadly disease first spread to Europe in 1827, and despite best efforts to keep the illness away from British shores, cases were quickly recorded in Sunderland. The symptoms were horrific and included profuse diarrhoea, vomiting and sweating, and death would often occur within hours of the first symptoms. The disease's mortality rates were high as doctors were baffled by how to stop the spread of the illness. Suspected cases of cholera began to be reported in Sunderland from late summer of 1831, and despite quarantine attempts soon spread across the region and then the rest of the country, across Britain 32,000 people died of cholera between the years of 1831 and 1832. The outbreak began with the death of Jack Crawford, who became the first ever victim of the epidemic and statues were constructed in Mowbray Park next to the Holy Trinity Church to honour him. Number 2. Stained Glass Windows The earliest known reference to true stained glass windows is from 1674 AD, when Benedict Biscop imported French craftsmen to do the glazing of the monastery of St Peter's in Monkwea Mouth. In the 1970s, hundreds of pieces of coloured glass and lead dating back to the 7th century were discovered there and at St Paul's in Jarrow. St Peter's was built a decade before St Paul's, so it's thought that Sunderland was presumably first. Although the original windows are no longer in one piece, fragments of the stained glass that was found can still be seen at St Peter's Church, as well as the Sunderland Museum and Winter Gardens and the National Glass Centre. Number 1. The Victoria Hall Disaster on the 16th of June 1883, 183 children died when they rushed towards a staircase for treats during a variety show at the Victoria Hall, a large concert hall near Mowbray Park. Over a thousand children surged towards the front, but at the bottom of the staircase, the door had been opened inward and bolted in such a way to leave only a gap wide enough for one child to pass through at a time. As the children rushed down the stairs, those at the front became trapped and were crushed by the weight of the crowd behind them. In total, 183 children aged between 3 and 14 died due to asphyxia and is today still the worst children's disaster to occur in British history. Today, a monument to remember the Mowbray Park Victoria Hall disaster stands in Mowbray Park. What facts about Sunderland have we missed out? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell to keep updated for all future uploads. And make sure to watch our part 1 video down below.